Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, the President of the Israel Academy of Science, Professor David El, members of the Steering Committee, and my co-director of the Conference Steering Committee, Professor Aaron Shachanover. Especially a warm and hearted greeting to our visitors who came from afar, uh, from uh, North America, and also from elsewhere uh, in Israel and outside of Israel. This is a very exciting conference uh, for us uh, at Van Leer, uh, for the Academy of Science, as you've heard, uh, and I think uh, a very timely one. We're, we're uh, dealing with these questions in the aftermath of a world pandemic, and I'll come to that in a minute. I want to address the title of the, of the conference, and uh, I think it's a, it's a wonderful title that captures quite a bit of what we're trying to do, but it could also be a misleading title, because it implicitly uh, refers to two tensions that I think are not tensions at all, and uh, it would be good to uh, clarify what we mean, not only in the title of the conference, but in the conference itself. The first tension, which I think is only an apparent tension, but not a real one, is between bioethics and biomedical research. And these fields often seem to be in tension with each other. Uh, scientists, big pharma, high tech, biotech, often complain about bioethical restrictions, or that's at least one imagination that we have of this relationship, that the ethicists, the lawyers, people from the humanities uh, constantly put barriers and blocks and limit the development of science and technology, and in some ways, uh, impair the development and the progress of scientific research. And that's not good, so people think, for science, and it may not also be very helpful, because science always finds a way uh, around these barriers. And if a certain country doesn't allow um, biomedical research, another will. And if it, you won't find a solution uh, in Israel, so we were told, uh, members of uh, ethics committee constantly, if the bioethical committee in Israel won't approve, so the scientists and uh, the, 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 high, the biotech will go elsewhere uh, to, to follow uh, their research. I think there is a tension there, but I think for the most part, both for principled reasons and for pragmatic reasons, this is not a real tension and should not be thought of as a tension. Science is uh, a project for the betterment of humanity. It is not an aim and a goal on its, on its own. Uh, and so, of course, is technology. And when we think of uh, the common cause, obviously, we want to take into consideration uh, ethical questions and ethical limitations on biomedical research. And I think today, more than in the past, scientists are the first to acknowledge this across the fields of science. And there's a very, and there's a growing awareness to the importance of uh, bioethics as part and not as an external constraint for biomedical research. Anecdotally, I can say that I was sitting in different uh, bioethical committees, but the one that I remember most vividly is the one that was actually interested in animal uh, welfare. And no one more than the scientists themselves was acutely aware of the needless, at times, suffering that is caused to the animals in the process of these experiments. And no one more than the, the veterinarians and the scientists was looking for alternatives not to use when not necessary uh, animals in these researches. And I think there's a growing awareness across the board, obviously, when it comes to experimentations on, on humans. So um, that's on a principled level, but also on a, a, a pragmatic level. If biosciences uh, and biotech are not conscious of the bioethical restraints, there's always a, a concern of a public backlash against science and technology. And we've seen this in many in many cases of genetic engineering of crops in Europe and in other cases in which the public becomes uh, growingly anxious about science and technology and obviously that is uh, bad for science and for the progress of science. So that's one tension that I think we need to overcome and in the spirit of what uh, Professor El was talking about, bioethics is actually one of the most exciting fields because it brings together people from the sciences, from the hard sciences, and from the humanities together to the table, not to talk about their differences, but actually to see together a shared problem and challenges and to work together across disciplines to solve these problems and to find good and helpful uh, and effective and ethical 
solutions to the problems facing uh, science. So that's one tension. The other tension that is implicit in the title of the, of the uh, conference is this emphasis on the future. Clearly, we have a concern with the bioethical questions that the future will bring and is bringing already uh, to the present. Uh, questions such as uh, genetic uh, engineering uh, and uh, uh, cloning and related uh, chimera and in other fields, AI and the development of artificial intelligence, and yet again, in a different, from a different aspect, big data and the importance of big data, but also the challenges that big data uh, pose, for example, to our privacy. So clearly there are a lot of things coming from the future that we're already anxious about, and we're thinking ahead. But I think, as we will hear soon from our keynote speaker, Professor Alan Bunt, uh, there's no way to think about the future without also thinking at the same time about the past. And it's not only about the, the future, it's about integrating our understanding of the past and of the future. And closely related to that is also, and very importantly, uh, our concern with what is happening in the present. Uh, again, to go back to COVID, uh, one of the things that we've learned from COVID is how important it is to maintain the public trust in science and the public trust in biomedical technology. And for, to gain that trust, that trust cannot be taken for granted. And to gain that trust, the public needs to, be, to feel that it is part of the scientific endeavor, that it is, takes part not only in investing and donating and in public sponsorship of medical research, but also that it gains on the other side from the development of biotechnologies. And obviously there's a big question of uh, equity and, and, and the, the, the fair uh, share in the, in the benefits of, uh, of biotechnology, both within societies and uh, outside uh, the borders and internationally. And we've seen this as a growing question around COVID and the disparities between people who could get uh, immune and those who couldn't get vaccinated. Uh, and that, that's a growing question. And if we want the public to be involved, and there's no science without the active involvement in, of the public in the scientific research. For example, big data is based on the fact that we all contribute our personal information for the sake of the progress of science, then we need to have to gain the trust of science and hence the importance of this uh, topic and of our discussion. I want to leave you with an anecdote that actually ties these two questions together. The question of the humanities and the sciences or the ethics and the science on the one hand, and also the question of the, fut of the past of tradition and the future. And the story goes, this is an, ane or an anecdote, a true story, that took place in All Souls College. And in All Souls College, as uh, the tradition goes, once a week they would invite two people to debate a question. And then that evening, the specific evening, there was a cardinal and a scientist who were there to debate the question of whether science could ever create in a lab a human being. And the scientist said, it was only a matter of time until science reaches the stage in which it can actually create a human being in the lab. And the cardinal opposed and said, no, this is impossible. Human beings are created in the image of God. And without divine intervention, there can be no human creation of man. And the discussion went back and forth, as you can imagine. And at some point, a third party intervened, Professor David Dowby, who is a scholar of ancient law. And he turned to the scientist and he said, I'll concede to you that science one day will be able to create a human being, but will it be able to create a Jew? So that was, uh, I think it's a, it's a very telling anecdote uh, you can contemplate. Um, and uh, I'd like to conclude with this and obviously thank uh, again uh, the members of the steering committee who joined Professor Chekhanover and myself, Professor Dina Ben Yehuda, Professor Nadab Davidovich, Professor David Head, Professor Fat Lad Levy, uh, Professor Yechid Barilan, Dr. Chagai Boaz, and of course, people from the academy who were involved in this, Dr. Yael uh, Ben Chaim, uh, Galia Frenzy, and thank you very much to all of you present this evening. I'd like to invite Professor Nadab Davidovich to lead the next session. Thank you.